Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back for another episode. And this week we're taking on the first viewer request. And it comes from Just Us, who you can check out at travkpeter.blogspot.com. Go check out their blog, um, see what they're all about, follow them, become their cyber friend, uh, whatever. It's a great blog, so go check them out. So Just Us writes, Paul, I would like to see an episode about getting the chocolate chip cookies just right. I can never make them quite like yours. You know, that's a good point about getting them just right. And, um, you know, we all want them to be just right. And so if you've ever looked at a recipe for any chocolate chip cookies, they're pretty much all the same. I mean, they pretty much have the same base ingredients. So really, the way to get them just right really isn't in the ingredients. It's in the method itself. And that's what we're going to try to tackle here on this episode. So first thing in the method, preheat your oven, 375 degrees. And I don't mean set your oven to 375. I mean make sure the temperature inside your oven is really 375 degrees using an oven thermometer. It, it really matters, so make sure you do it. I've got to set mine to 380 because it runs about five degrees cool. So, let's do it. All right, for the ingredients, got them split up into three teams. One's our foundation, which is our white and brown sugar and our butter. Wet team is milk, eggs, and vanilla. And our dry team is our flour, our salt, and baking soda. Okay, we're gonna start with our foundation. So into the bowl goes one quarter cup of white sugar and one and one quarter cup of brown sugar. And I know I said the details are in the method and not the ingredients, but the, the ratio of the ingredients kinda matter too because we're adding a lot more brown sugar to white sugar. And that's gonna help the, the cookies to stay, to stay moist because of the molasses and the brown sugar. Also with the wet team, we've got more liquid ingredients, so it's gonna help it stay more moist that way too. But the majority of the difference is in the method. So to, uh, to finish out our foundation team, we're gonna, well first we're gonna kinda mix these up a little bit. So get a paddle attachment, and if you have a stand mixer, that's ideal. If you don't, a hand mixer would work. If you don't have that, it's probably not gonna work. So get one of those, that's all I gotta say. So just, Mix them on about, you know, a low speed until they're just a little bit combined. Then put it on low and slowly pour in your melted butter. And you, you want this butter to be a little bit cooled. You don't want it to be scalding hot right off the stove. Alright, and right now it looks like this. Looks just like that. So not very appealing. But we're gonna whip some air into this. And these bubbles are gonna be formed by the sugar. And that's gonna help the structure of our cookies. Medium speed. Let them go for about uh, four minutes. Alright, as you can see, our texture has changed a lot. Um, there's a lot of air has been incorporated into this, and that's what's really going to help us in our structure of the cookie. So, I think we're about there. It's been about three minutes. And so we're going to add our eggs next. Put it on low, and add them one at a time. So that was one egg and one egg yolk. Next, the milk. Two tablespoons. And vanilla. Teaspoon and a half. I never measure this stuff. I just eyeball it. Great. Scrape it down and make sure it's all well incorporated. Just like that. 
Another little mix. Beautiful. All right. Now at this point, I've got my dry stuff, which is the flour, the salt, and the baking soda. I never sift it. I just get a whisk, mix it all together, and then your whisk is still clean. Just knock off the flour and put it back. No use in washing that. So I hate sifting, so I just whisk my stuff. So anyway, we're going to add this. We're going to put the mixer on low and add them in little bitty installments. So I'd say about, you know, half 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 cup per per installment, just a little bit, shake some in. Make sure the flour kind of gets in and then bump up the speed a bit. And once once you see it incorporates, drop it back to low and add a little bit more. Okay. Bump it up just a little bit and drop it back down and just keep doing that until all your flour is in. Alright, last but definitely not least, the chocolate chips. And what I've found is 12 ounces, a whole bag is usually a little bit too much, so 10 ounces is probably the way to go. Um, lock your stand mixer before you do this so the head doesn't bounce up and down once all the chips go in. And pour your chips in. Let them go for a bit. Turn it up. Unlock it. And then slowly pull it up. And there it is. Our wonderful dough. Chill for five minutes. Five minutes is up, and just give the batter a quick stir. Really, just want to get the cold batter off the sides of the sides of the bowl, and give the batter in the middle a little chance to chill as well. Five more minutes. Okay, the dough has come out of the fridge, and we're gonna scoop it on our pans now. What I like to use is a disher, and this really isn't an ice cream scoop per se, it's an actual specific measurement. It's a number 40, and what that means I think is a 40th of a quart. And I don't know how many fluid ounces are, that is, but whatever, it's a number 40. I found it's the perfect amount for the right size cookie. So, nine per pan. Okay, into the oven, but I'm not going to tell you exactly how long. What I like to do is put it in for probably uh, 10 minutes, maybe 9.5 to 10 minutes, and check them right then. They might need another minute or so. Now here's the key thing. What you want to look for is you want the edges to just be browned and set, but you don't want the center of the cookie to actually be like what you would think of as a cool cookie feeling like. If it's already like that and set, it's already burned. So it's just gonna keep cooking after it comes out of the oven. So you wanna take it out before it's fully done. That way, it, when it keeps cooking afterwards, it's gonna become the perfect texture. So check it around nine and a half, ten 10 minutes, and then uh, you'll go from there. All right, 10 minutes is up. And these are looking pretty good, yeah. They're just starting to get fairly brown around the outside. You can really see that right there. The edges are just a bit more golden than the centers. And the centers are nice and they're still really pretty much gooey. But that's what we want. So we're going to let them sit right here on the pan while we scoop out the next pan. So they're going to keep cooking just for a little bit. But you know, only for a minute. Okay, so this pan goes in 10 minutes. In the meantime, get a cooling rack and get your cookies off the pan because we don't want them to keep cooking. That is just about enough. And these look really perfect. When you're getting your cookies off your pan, these are going to be pretty soft, so you want to use a nice, just swift motion. Just go right into them like that. 
You know, you don't want to take your time or else it's going to stick on the spatula. And now, if you're like my wife, you like to eat these as they are right now. But that's all good and fine, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would wait, and I kind of make her wait sometimes, even though sometimes she gets them without me looking. Um, I would make, I would recommend that you wait until they cool off. One, for flavor, I think they just taste better when they're not scalding hot, and two, for texture. And I've got a few here that have cooled off, and listen to this. You hear that? It's like a little candy shell around it. If you picture yourself putting M&Ms in your mouth, but then not chewing them and sucking off the candy until there's just that little bitty layer of candy coating, that's what this is like. And there's just this crispy layer, but then when you break it, it's just soft and perfect. Not dry, moist and delicious, wonderful, perfect chocolate chip cookies. Now, I could eat these all here myself, or hey. Hey. Oh. or you could come over and share them with your friends. So um, that's what I suggest you do instead of eating them all yourself. Make them, see how easy it is to do, and then share them with your good friends. I have just her, Kay, and just him, Travis, and together they make just us. Which again, you can see at travkpeter.blogspot.com. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Again, if you have any comments or questions or ideas, um, you can comment on the blog or you can email to cwpquestions at gmail.com. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.